All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Beth Herman. I'm an educational consultant with the Department of Public Instruction. And I welcome you to um, our next installment in our evidence-based practices for SEL series. Um, I'm very excited today to introduce you to some folks who are gonna share um, another evidence-based program with you called Caring School Community. Um, Sue Wilder and Leslie Erickson from the Center for Collaborative Classrooms will uh, share this information with you. Just a few housekeeping things. And we invite you to put any questions you have in the chat box. I'll be monitoring that. So as they come up, I will find a logical pause position to ask the questions of the um, consultants speaking with us today. There will be some time at the end for questions as well. I encourage you to ask questions. This is your time to get as much information as you can to locate programs that are the best fit for you. This um, webinar series came out of that desire as we got lots of questions from those of you in the field asking about various programs. So we're trying to make it as simple as we can for you to get as much information as you can. This program will be recorded and it will be posted on the website as soon as we um, get it closed captioned as is required. We also um, have a YouTube playlist where all of the SEL webinars will go. So it's one um, location for you to find those and I'll share that um, location in the chat box as we get rolling. So without any further information or further stalling and ado, I'd like to turn this over to Sue and Leslie. Ladies, are you ready? We are, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Beth. This is Leslie Erickson, and I wanted to take the opportunity to introduce to you Sue Wilder. She is a Senior Director of Field Development and a longtime member of Collaborative Classroom. And prior to joining uh, the Center for Collaborative Classroom, she spent over 30 years in Florida's public schools, classroom teacher, reading coach, interventionist, et cetera. So I have um, a colleague with uh, immense amount of experience in schools that will be sharing with you scaring, caring school community. So, welcome. Thank you, Leslie. So, hi, everyone. I'm really excited to join you today. Um, I, I don't want to make you uh, envious or anything, but I am in Florida. Um, I'm, I'm working from my home today and um, uh, happy, happy to be with you guys and, and really excited about the work you guys are doing. I spent a little bit of time exploring some of, of your initiatives on the website and the work that Beth is leading and it's quite impressive and exciting and incredibly hopeful. So thank you so much for joining us today. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about who we are at Collaborative Classroom and then we'll get right into the content of Caring School Community. So in the early 1980s, our founder, a researcher by the name of Eric Schaps, who you may or may not be familiar with, he's, he's been closely aligned with Collaborative or Castle for a very long time. But Eric began researching what happens for kids long term when you look at, uh, when you really address their social emotional well-being in the K-8 grades. And what Eric found was obviously uh, what you guys already know that the benefits are lasting and they're significant. And from Eric's research, we as an organization really started trying to figure out how do we help every teacher infuse the practices that really support kids' social emotional development into their everyday instruction. We started out doing that strictly as a research organization, then as a professional development organization. And then ultimately what we learned is that <clears throat> teachers can actually make significant changes and support student social emotional well-being in the regular classroom with a lot of support. But when the staff developers leave or when they don't have tools and resources in their hands to continue that work, often those things fall aside. And so we decided to basically curricularize the practices that Eric found to be most significant in the kind of benefits and work that we need for kids. And so as an organization, that's what we do now. We are a nonprofit um, and we create curricula that help teachers support students, both academic and social emotional well-being. And Caring School Community is the first of that curricula. Um, it's the one we've had, you know, the longest, the most experience with. And today, what I hope to do is really just introduce Caring School Community. This is the second edition. Um, it's only a year old now. 
So I'd like to introduce that to you and then answer any questions that you have. Beth was kind enough to sort of give me some of the questions that have come up up front. So I've tried to plan the content around that, but please don't hesitate to, to enter your questions, as Beth said, in the chat box. If, if you want to unmute yourself and ask the question, that's fine too. Um, and we'll just go from there. So our, <clears throat> to just give you a little bit of the building blocks of Caring School Community, the, the practices that are infused in CSC um, really give us a way to connect what's happening for kids in their classroom with what's happening for all of the students and all of the adults across the school, as well as bringing children's home lives into the school community. So we do that with a number of different um, activities or practices or support materials. So the fundamental classroom piece are the morning meetings, the closing meetings, and the class meetings. So the morning and closing circles or meetings uh, really help kids build that sense of community. They uh, are designed to connect what's happening across the day for students and, and, we'll, and across the year really, and we'll go into that a little more further. The, home, the Cross Age Buddies activities are a way of helping older kids and younger kids really get to know each other, really building that school-wide community, and, they, and the children work on things that really help them both academically and social-emotionally and help build that sense of community so that kids are taking care of one another, not just when they're in classrooms, but when they're on the playground or they're at the bus stop and so, so forth. And then the the way that we bring the home into the classroom is through two things. The home, sorry, I'm clicking buttons that I shouldn't be. Through the home connection activities, those activities I'll say a little more about, but that's a way for kids to bring some of their family values and cultures and things that their families care deeply about and, and just life experiences that they're able to share with their classmates. And then school-wide activities are a way to bring, actually bring the members of the community and people from home into the school for things where we might learn together, celebrate together, maybe even do some projects together. So I see Jessica has asked a question, are there any schools in Wisconsin or in neighboring states that are using Caring School Community so you could observe an action? I, uh, I'm gonna have Leslie, you know, whenever you're ready, Leslie, you can respond to that question. You can either put it in the chat or if, if you need to do some more research and be able to report back, that's fine too. So you can just let us know. But Jessica, will definitely let you know where there may be nearby schools who are using Caring School Community. So, i try to get my chat off my screen. So what do we do with a, a, a Caring School Community? Well, we're really intentionally working with the adults and the children to build those caring relationships. We want kids to care about one another. We want the adults to care about one another. We want kids to feel safe. And one of the ways we do that is by directly teaching the social skills kids need to work with and get along with all kinds of people, even those who may be different from themselves. So we teach them how to turn and talk with a partner. We teach them how to take responsibility for sharing their thinking. We teach them how to agree and disagree respectfully. We teach them how to really listen to one another. Um, and we do that by, by working with our students to create calm and orderly learning environments. <clears throat> And, and through doing that, by in, including the kids in the creation of our rules and the ways we want to be, we're able to help them acquire and develop that self-discipline that they need to really take responsibility and ownership for themselves um, within the school day. So I see a lot of questions are popping up. I'm just going to pause and see, is there something else here, Beth or Leslie, that we should stop and talk about? Um, I think that you're okay to keep going. This is uh, regarding the conversation about districts in the area. So um, okay. thank you. Go ahead and keep going. Okay. I, Beth, I'm actually going to close my chat and then you can interrupt me. If you yep. Need to. Okay, awesome. So just a little bit about the research space. I shared with you that Eric Schatz was our original researcher and you know, you may be familiar with the child development project. We fondly referred to as CDP, um, but some of the outcomes of, of CDP 
and what Eric learned is, and this is, you know, all reported in the Castle research as well and, and the meta-analysis, but we, we know that when we focus on student social emotional well-being, they do better in school. They're more likely to be engaged, they're more likely to want to do the work, to come to school, um, and really work harder. They also develop pro-social tendencies, like they want other people to do well. They're concerned about other people's well-being. They want to make sure they're including everyone and not being exclusive and so forth. Because they care so much about one another and they care about the adults as well, the incidences of misbehavior begin to diminish and decline. And as kids move up into middle and high school, they're much less likely to engage in, in behaviors that hurt them long term. So things like early onset of drug or alcohol abuse, delinquency, um, criminal behaviors and, and fighting and so forth. So we know that we, we, it's critical, and you guys already know this, that we have a really intentional systemic plan for addressing student social emotional well-being in the, the KA grades. So just to let you know, uh, we tried and in, in, we got the funding to revise Caring School Community. One of our goals was to make it as affordable as possible because we'd like to see these materials in the hands of every classroom teacher in this country. Um, and we'd like for every leader, school counselor, you know, whoever might be leading these initiatives to also have the materials they need for successful implementation. And so we priced the materials accordingly. The teacher materials, and, and it is important that every teacher have their own set of materials. The teacher materials are $150 per teacher or per classroom. And then the principal's leadership kit, or if you're a guidance counselor leading this initiative and, and others who might be doing that, the materials you need are $125. So this is what teachers get. Um, if you're a teacher in kindergarten or first grade, you're going to have your teacher's manual that will include all of the guidance for implementing Caring School Community. It will also include supports for problem solving and it will help you really understand why we teach the lessons in the ways that we do. You also will receive the Cross Age Buddies activity book. The Cross Age Buddies activity book includes a, a whole collection of activities that you will plan with your partner teacher for helping kids get to know one another and at the same time developing socially and academically. So uh, those you can see me, you can see how thick the Cross Age Buddies book is. And the activities in the Cross Age Buddies book include things such as um, early in the year getting to know one another activities. They include cross-curricular activities in art, in language arts, in math, in PE, in science, in social studies, and so forth, as well as end of the year celebration activities. You also receive an assessment guide that helps you really assess and survey your students and yourself and thinking about implementation and how kids are doing. You have student questionnaires, faculty questionnaires, you have assessments for program implementation to help guide your own implementation and so forth. And then you have the, the Caring School Discipline book. The Caring School Discipline book, I'll say a little more about later, but this is a support resource for helping you really address ongoing problematic behaviors that children might be having. You have um, trade books that go with the program that support and help kids have conversations about important ideas. And then finally, in KN1, you have classroom chat cards. In the upper grades, those will transition into classroom meeting cards, but we're helping young kids learn how to really participate in a, in a class meeting using those chats. So similarly, in grades two through five, you have those same components. Um, you have a few more trade books. Well, you have the same number of trade books, but the one thing that is different is the class meeting cards are uh, much more robust, obviously, as kids are really addressing and taking on challenging and difficult problems. And I'll say a little more about how those class meeting cards are organized. So I mentioned a little bit about the Cross Age Buddy book. You'll see that we recommend kids are separated by at least two grade levels. There's 40 activities that are included. And we suggest that buddies meet uh, once or twice a month so that they really do have the opportunity to get to know each other and develop those special relationships um, with, with younger and older students. 
So the way the we, a week is organized is um, every week has a very predictable structure. If you open any of our lessons, you're going to see very similar routines so that once teachers get accustomed to using the materials, it becomes very predictable both for them as well as for their students. So each week starts with an overview of what's happening across the week. Then there will be a feature that includes integration suggestions. So uh, what might go with what we're doing this week thematically in your content areas? Uh, where might you infuse some opportunities for social skill development or social emotional learning in your content area? As well as suggestions for how to assess how kids are doing, developing the social skills and social emotional learning competencies. Each week we'll have a daily morning circle where kids come together and do some work together, building their classroom community, uh, developing norms and so forth. And each week we'll have a closing circle activity where kids play games, they greet each other, they think about how they did that day and they're proactively solving problems that might have come up. Every week um, in, in kindergarten and first grade, there is a community chat in grades two through five, and I see I have an error on the slide, so I apologize for that. But in, in grades two through five, we have class meetings where kids come together and work on problems solving or getting to know one another further or and, and being proactive about things like getting ready for substitutes or getting ready for field trips and such as that. And I'll, I'll say a little more about that. And then each week includes a home connection activity. So typically what happens is on Monday, the children get their home connection activity and then on um, Friday or later in the week, they'll bring that home connection activity back and share what they learned with their partner and with their classmates. And those home connection activities might be as simple as um, go and talk to someone in your family about how you got your name and then kids will come back and share the origin of their name and so forth. It's a way to build community, but also bring the home into the classroom. So a typical day with Caring School community would include a, a morning circle activity where kids greet each other and they, they'll include some kind of activity for that day. Um, the closing circle is five to 10 minutes, depending on what they need to talk about, what teachers have observed that she might wanna address or something kids might bring up. The class meetings are, are a little longer, community chat, that's once a week and, and teachers would need to carve out 15 or 20 minutes for those class meetings. The buddies activities, probably teachers will allocate 30 to 45 minutes a couple of times a month. And then in grades th two through five, we recommend um, usually at the end of the week about a 20 minute time for kids to make choices where we can really help them learn how to make thoughtful choices and spend time doing things like extra reading or writing or playing math games or, you know, project-based activities that where kids can take responsibility and ownership for their own learning and their own behavior and, and getting along and collaborating with others. So the organization of the year, kindergarten through fifth grade, starts with uh, fully specified lessons during the first 10 weeks. The goals of these lessons are to really help kids build that classroom community, gives them a chance to work together with their teachers to establish how they want to be as a classroom. And that's when we launch the Buddies program. Following that, you have topic weeks. After kindergarten and first grade, those topic weeks can be taught in any order. So teachers would choose which topic weeks they want to address based on what the needs of their classroom or what's happening in their school. So those topic weeks are organized by categories such as school life. So things like playground, uh, the lunchroom, assemblies, and so forth. Character building lessons where those uh, lessons will include things like um, just personal development and you know how we wanna be as human beings. And then the social issues problems will address topics such as bullying or teasing, exclusion, and so forth. There are open weeks so that teachers can create their own lessons depending on what they believe their kids would benefit from. And then the end of year activities are really celebrations and reflections on how we grew as a classroom community and how we've developed as human beings. The grades six through eight teachers packages include some of the similar components. 
Um, the, the six through eight organization is a little bit different because we, uh, re we recognize and understand that the schedule and the organization of the school day in those grades is a little different from the typical elementary school. And we want um, kids to still have this opportunity to work on social emotional learning, but at the same time, we understand that the parameters and logistics might be a little different. So what we recommend is that middle schools organize their day so that kids are assigned an advisory period and the activities are designed for teachers to use within that advisory. So let me pause there before I go any further to see Beth or Leslie, have there any, been any other questions that have come up? We should stop and address? Nope, I think so far we're good. Great, thank you. So the program components in six through eight include that teacher's manual, which will have all of the advisory activities. There will be a teacher's guide to subject area integration so that teachers who are teaching the various content areas have some support for how they might integrate social emotional learning and how they might infuse that into their classroom instruction. You, you continue to have the Caring School Discipline book. This one's geared specifically for older students. You'll have your assessment resource book so you can really inform what's happening, but you can also assess the results. Uh, again, you'll have a cross-age buddies activity book with activities that teachers can use to help kids get to know one another outside of their classroom, as well as the school-wide activities where you can bring the community into the school, the life of the school. So the organization of the year, similar to the organization in the K-5 grades, the first 10 weeks are taught in order because we want to really build a foundation for the work we're going to do across the year. The topic weeks, um, again, teachers decide and similar kind of uh, organizational structures in terms of the categories. We do include wellness and creativity in the middle school years. So we want kids to learn how to take care of one another as well as really utilize the talents that they have. You still have support for teachers to create their own. You know, we really believe that we want to work ourselves out of a job. So once teachers learn how to integrate these practices, uh, while we hope they'll continue to use our materials, we want them to also really honor and, and recognize what they need to do for the kids they teach. And then the end of year closing activities where kids learn how to celebrate their accomplishments, but also say goodbye and wish one another well. So some of the sample topic weeks are listed here. So you'll notice things like uh, under the positive school experiences, kids will, you know, really work together to think about, you know, how can we make lunchtime a positive time for everyone? Or how can we develop friendships? Uh, how, you know, how do we work together in appreciating the differences that, that we have from both our cultural perspectives, but also just our diverse things we care about, things that we're interested in and so forth. You'll see that there are social issues such as peer pressure or um, respecting one another's belongings and so forth. And then the wellness and creativity lessons include things like the importance of sleep and I think for middle school kids in particular that's kind of important. So I'm going to share with you now a, a class meeting video. This will give you an example of what a class meeting might look like. This, this particular video was filmed in Oakland, California. Oakland is a, a district that we've worked in for a very long time and so um, we have a significant amount of video from classrooms in Oakland and, and if you would like to see any more of those, I'll share our website at the end and you feel free to go and uh, go to our YouTube channel or just go onto our website and, and you can get to know the program materials up close and personal via video. Sue, so, so I, I, I do have one question. Would you like to take it after the video or before? Uh, I can take it now. So are there components built in to help build adult SEL competencies? There are, and those, the adult support are primarily found in the principal's leadership guides. So I'll say a little bit more about the principal leadership guide at the end, but um, you know, the way we organize that leadership guide is for really, it's designed to help the principal and, and his leadership team really build that adult learning community. Um, to help the adults in the building get to know one another better. There are meeting agendas with team builders infused throughout and so forth. Thank you. Perfect, okay. So as you watch the class meeting, just think about what you notice um, and how what's happening in this video might be supported in, in your setting. 
the class meetings really do help the children identify emotions that are happening and find empathy with their classmates and put themselves into other people's positions too. They're, they have very limited vocabulary at this age and they are still learning how to express difficult emotions with each other. And it's just, you know, a way to give them some language, give them some practice, have them see things and to move forward. We learn lots of things in class meetings. We learn about, about new things and learn about what do we do. Sometimes we forget. We share what's in our, in our mind, our hearts, and our soul. And then it just lets out everything. We just let out everything that happens. Like if, it, if, it's, if there's bullying, um, it's, we care for each other. I think it's important to get your feelings out and it helps with social skills, being able to speak your mind and be true to yourself because not a lot of kids have that opportunity and are able to do that. I think it makes the class a little bit better because once we go over it, you don't see it as much as you did. So I think it helps. The meetings do work and you're getting kids to talk you're getting kids to get to know each other, and you're getting kids to learn how to agree and uh, agree to disagree. And that kind of conversation uh, really, it builds a team. And I think that when you have that foundation, that's when you're able to see it in all other facets. They want to listen to each other. Usually this age child wants to has a lot to say, and you could see that they still have a lot to say, but they're also listening to each other and changing their, their thinking as they're listening. It's one of those few times that that happens. The kids who have gotten picked on haven't really spoken up about it. I think class meetings have gave them the courage to actually speak up about it. I've learned that like other classmates are more sensitive than others, and others have been teased, like have been picked on. It, like, makes me nicer to, the, to that person. When, when you hurt someone, it doesn't just hurt the person that you hurt, it also hurts you. So if you learn how they feel and you learn how that really hurt that person, that will help you understand that you have to say sorry. There's some, certain people in the class that don't really, I'm not gonna say hate, but dislike other people. Like when you hear from them what they're getting teased about, you don't, you don't want to do anything like that because, like, they share how they feel about that thing. And, like, you might dislike them, but you might not dislike them so much that you have to say that one thing to them. The kids learn that if somebody hurts me, I can still care for this other person. I can talk to this other person, and we can still build a relationship. It has made me more aware and empathetic of the emotional tone of my classroom. It has made me really value the fact that when the children are safe and um, able to express themselves and, um, and feel good, just how happy the classroom feels. Good interactions take place, beautiful things that children teach each other and make a new friend even. Brother friends back, brother back, thank you. Brother friends back, brother back today. Brother friends back, brother back next to you. Brother friends back and sing, sing this song. So I'm going to invite you to just take a minute and either enter in the chat or if you want to unmute yourself and just say out loud, what from this video really resonated with you? And what, what do you think about how meetings like these might support the students you serve um, in their social emotional development? So I'll give you a, a few minutes to think about that and I'm gonna open the chat so I can see what you might be entering or feel, please feel free to unmute yourself. If you're in the room with someone else, 
You might even want to share with one another what you're thinking. So I hope you'll really continue to think about how class meetings and uh, might really support your students and what you noticed about the students in the video and how they've been developing the social skills, but also SEL competencies and how class meetings might help them. So I'll continue with the caring school discipline component because I think this is something that we all struggle with um, in schools and Certainly, you know, we, we want to be proactive about school discipline so that kids make better choices, they make better decisions, they understand why it's important for them to be respectful and kind and helpful and, in, and really exercise some self-control uh, while they're at school. And, and they really are able to do that. So <clears throat> the primary goal for caring, caring school discipline for us is really helping students acquire that self-discipline, that they're able to build their self-control, that they understand how their behavior impacts others and have, they have some conscious around that, and that they have a sense of responsibility for helping all, all of their classmates or other people in their community do well, and they're able to exercise that feeling of responsibility. And so the way that we do that in caring school discipline is first of all by creating those caring and supportive communities within the classroom so kids learn to make better choices. We also really help them learn how to listen to one another and we help them really, we really facilitate thinking around why the way the choices we make matter. We help teachers learn how to effectively manage their classrooms so that they're giving kids choices, they're giving kids ownership, they're giving kids responsibility, and they're treating students with respect at all times so that kids feel cared for and they want to make good choices. We also wanna help teachers learn to treat misbehavior just as they would treat mistakes in their academic work. So, you know, really helping, seeing opportunities and finding opportunities to teach kids how to behave and how to make the kind of choices we hope they'll make. And not judging kids' misbehavior as some kind of character or moral flaw in, in themselves as human beings. We wanna help teachers really focus on what students can do to make amends if they have made mistakes and really learn how, you know, apologizing or making amends um, will help us make better decisions in the future instead of making kids feel, you know, humiliating kids or making them feel ashamed um, necessarily because of their behavior. And we want to use techniques that are not disruptive for the teaching and learning. So, you know, instead of punishing the whole class, we want teachers to learn how to address problems individually with students and not do it publicly. So, you know, we, we treat um, the way uh, we deal with this a little differently in caring school community. We, we don't uh, believe that kids necessarily need extrinsic incent and incentives to learn to behave. Uh, we, we don't think that we want to overly punish and use punitive, punitive measures with kids because we know that oftentimes kids who um, are receive suspensions and expulsions and other punishments are disproportionately uh, more with our disadvantaged students. Um, and we also know that when we rely on effusive praise, that oftentimes it works against us and, and our goals for behavior. So we try to be very proactive about those things and help teachers learn proactive ways um, and more positive ways in caring school discipline. So as I said before, you know, we, we think it starts with what happens every single day 
Um, we think that, you know, what happens across the day, the instructionally, the content is, if that content and the instruction is engaging for kids, if it's rigorous, if it includes opportunities for kids to learn, to work together and receive some social skill instruction, then, then our discipline issues are going to be far fewer. Also, we believe that if kids do, if a discipline issues do arise and kids do, oh, sorry, I don't know why that happened. Uh, Beth, you warned me about that. Um, if, if kids do have problems, then we want to deal with that individually. And so we give teachers very specific support for one-on-one -on -one interventions in the Caring School Discipline Guide that helps them know, uh, really address given problems. So the way the Caring School Discipline book is arranged starts with a list of possible causes. So what, are, what is happening that might cause kids to make choices around aggression or bullying or defiance or disengagement or off-task behaviors, things such as that? <clears throat> we help teachers think about and kids think about what might be the expected outcome of the intervention. We provide structure and techniques that will help prevent the behavior. And then we include three levels of intervention for kids. So the first level will be helping teachers make in the moment decisions around how we might redirect the behavior so that kids can get back on task or kids can stop the misbehavior. The second level of intervention would include a one-on-one -on -one conference with the, stu the student, much like you might have a reading or writing conference in a, or see a reading and writing conference with the student and helping kids make good choices and give them some strategies to use and reach agreements about how that's going to work. The third level of intervention would be if the behavior continued, then we would work with the student, we would work with others in the building to develop an individual learning plan for each of those students who need that kind of intervention. So I'm gonna pause there before I go to the principal's package to give you a chance to ask any questions you might wanna ask about the intervention. I mean, the, beha the discipline. So are there any questions? You can put them in the chat box or ask them at this point. We'll just uh, give you a few minutes. It's not looking like anything's coming in at this point. So if you want to keep going, Sue, we'll check back again. Thank you, Beth. So the principal's package includes the components that you see here on the screen that help a, a principal or a, any leader really who might be supporting this implementation structure and organize the implementation across the year. It gives you all of the tools that you need. So you, you'll receive the principal's leadership guide. The principal's leadership guide includes all of the resources that you need for launching and sustaining and providing ongoing support to your teachers. You'll have meeting agendas for building for uh, the adult team building in the, and building the adult learning community. Uh, you'll have sets of team builders for the adult learning community included in the leadership guide. You have troubleshooting guides for when things go wrong, what, you know, including strategies for how you might solve, anticipate and solve any problems. Um, you have all, really all of the guidance that you need around implementing and supporting Caring School community. In addition, you'll have a copy of the Caring School Discipline book so the principal and teachers can work together. You have uh, school-wide assessments, so you have all the assessments you need to monitor with your implementation. You have school-wide community building activities so that you can work with your leadership team to organize and structure the school-wide activities. And you have a principal's calendar that really helps you pace the support across the year so you know when to uh, bring teachers together or teams together to look at what's happening and to work together towards common goals. You have agendas for establishing a school vision, for you have agendas for a stat for caring school community, but you also have agendas for things like uh, agreeing on a discipline policy and so forth. So we try to bake as much of the support for ongoing support and training into the program as we possibly could so that whether or not you have additional support from the consultants at Collaborative Classroom, you have everything that you need for a successful implementation. So, so this, we had another question, Sue. Okay. And, I, and I'd like to get your answer here because it's regarding the discipline 
okay. component. Mm -hmm. um, so a number of our schools in Wisconsin use PBIS or multi-level systems of support. And the question is, do you have schools that are using the program that also are doing a PBIS or multi-level support system? Um, there seems to be a little bit of variation from the way that Wisconsin interprets, a number of Wisconsin schools interpret that for PBIS around praise. Sure, sure. So, you know, we do have schools and we do have schools that use both Caring School Community and PBIS. Um, I, I can do a little research and give you guys a list of those places uh, that might be helpful. I think, you know, what we would say is we, you know, certainly praise, we all praise one another. So I don't, I don't want to be unreasonable about that. But what we want to help teachers learn to do is to help kids learn how to really acknowledge and feel validated based on what they've accomplished, not what someone else has said about what they've accomplished necessarily. Uh, specific praise, obviously, is, you know, is something that's going to be really important to help kids know what they're doing that's right. Mm -hmm. So some of those issues, you know, I'd, I'd love to have a, a, long, a longer conversation about that. But I think, you know, the goals of PBIS and the goals of Caring School Community obviously are the same. Like we're all on the same page in the songbook in terms of we want kids to develop the competence that they need to be successful adults. So I don't think, I, I don't see any reason why PBIS and Caring School Community couldn't work together in a very complementary way. And it does look like the interventions, the three levels of intervention could match the three levels of tiered support. Another question came in and you answered a little bit of this earlier. So um, the curriculum was, this curriculum was updated last year, correct? Mm -hmm. And then are lessons reflective of current needs of students? For example, uh, technology, social media, um, are there planned updates to include any of that? So that's a really good question, and, uh, and to be perfectly honest, I'd have to go back and read all of the lessons to answer that specifically, so I don't want to say yes or no. I will tell you that we do have lessons in our literacy programs that address those issues directly, so safety on the internet and so forth. Okay. Um, but I can, I, you know, I'm going to have to do a little more research for that, and, and I can send you that information, Beth. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Not right now. All right, great. So the Principal's Leadership Guide is the place that we really have provided you with all the tools and resources you need, both for launching, for planning, uh, and for implementation, for launching Caring School Community, and then ongoing support for implementation. You, the Principal's Leadership Guide um, includes both text that gives you very concrete, specific uh, recommendations and suggestions, but you also get PowerPoint slides that you can use to structure your meetings and so forth. Um, the observation tools so that when principals are doing, you know, classroom observations or walkthroughs or, or you know, they know what to look for um, and both in what they see instructionally, but also evidence of student learning. So that's all included in the leadership guide. In addition to that, at Collaborative Classroom, we do have a, a team of about 50 consultants who go into buildings and work directly with teachers. Uh, we often work with teachers in a workshop setting as well as in classroom support. Um, I know I was just in New Hampshire a month or so ago, and I was, it's the middle of the year, they've been implementing Carrie School Community now since the beginning of the school year, and I went in to really help answer questions, do some troubleshooting, and really help them dig a little deeper into the Caring School discipline. So that kind of ongoing support, um, we do charge a fee for, it's $2,600 a day for in-person visits. In addition to the in-person visit, we offer ongoing virtual support. The cost of that is obviously significant less, and I don't know the current pricing, but I can check on that if that's something anyone is interested in. Um, if you decide to invest in a caring community, you'll want to work directly with Leslie on an implementation plan where you can really decide together how many days you might want to have us work with you in person, how many days you, know, you might want to do some kind of virtual ongoing support, and then she'll give you a quote for what the total of that would be. We often do provide some complementary support as well, so I'll just uh, let you know that. And we have two yeah. more questions. Okay. 
So a question about cultural relevance, um, particularly for some of our school districts and communities that are very diverse. Okay, so, you know, what I would say about, uh, what I really appreciate about Karen School Community in particular is that when kids are involved in the Karen School Community, the, the, I, the idea is for kids to really get to know as much as they can about one another and the cultures that they come from, the differences and similarities, and really learn to appreciate one another's differences and similarities. And the home side act, or the home connection, we formerly call them home sites, so pardon me for that slip, but the home connection activities in particular allow kids to really bring in and value one another's life experiences and that of their parents and families. So in terms of helping kids really learn uh, about one another and why they may think differently about things and why they may look different or be different or have different life experiences, I feel like that's just incredibly baked into the curriculum. Okay, and then another question about um, content integration. So you've got components of the curriculum that actually integrate with academic content. Um, is it just language arts and literacy or is it other content areas as well? All of the content areas are included in the integration okay. recommendations, as well as in the cross age buddy activities, okay. including the arts uh, and physical education, and health and wellness, and so forth. Sounds comprehensive. And that's it for questions for so far. So, so we're almost done. Um, so, you know, I, I do want to just say that, you know, when we decided to curricularize the effective practices that Eric found in his research, one thing that we knew had to happen is that the lessons themselves had to help teachers be able to successfully implement effective practices. And so embedded in every lesson, there's a lot of support for teachers on how to facilitate, for example. <coughs> there's a lot of, pardon me, a lot of support for teachers to learn how to ask, um, to ask open-ended questions, to use wait time, to use cooperative structures, so kids understand, I mean, teachers understand that it's important for teachers, for kids to be able to talk to one another. Um, there's a lot of support for teachers to learn how to really dig deeper and probe for diverse thinking so that kids aren't just, you know, one kid raises their hand and that's the answer everybody goes with, but really seeking those diverse opinions. That's all built into the program. In addition to that, we provide ongoing support just through our own classroom community. If you go to our website, you'll see a number of events. We offer um, free of charge. There are webinars that we build in across the year. We have blogs that come out, you know, several a month. Um, and then we have a community in our Facebook page as well as in Twitter where we co connect our people or you know educators who use our materials to one another they ask one another they ask and answer questions of one another they support one another we have a network of leaders who come together uh, every other month or so to really share what's happening in their districts to learn from one another to problem solve together and we're constantly creating new networks if any of you are interested in a CSC network we'd be more than happy to, to work on putting that together as well so we want you to be successful as possible. We want your teachers to be successful and we certainly want your students to be successful um, and specifically in developing the SEL competencies. So some of the tools that we provide to really assess the school climate and culture to help you measure the success of your initiatives, we include surveys, we have questionnaires, uh, both for students and faculty, uh, as well as the support staff and, and families. Um, so those are all included with the package. So that's the end of my content. I'll stop there and thank you guys for attending and just see what other questions might have come up across the course of the session. So thank you, Sue. Um, any other questions that you might have? Sue, so while we're waiting to see if some come in, could you put up a slide with contact, the contact information you had? I think it was your first one. Okay, so here's... Uh, okay. Yeah, so this information um, is uh, for our actual classroom community. And Leslie, can you put your email in the chat? And then we did get a question, um, wondering if you could give us a sense of what the um, questionnaires are, like what the student questionnaires, staff, parent questionnaires look like. 
tour. So if I stop sharing my screen, mm -hmm. I can kind of hold it up and show you. <laughs> um, but they, so I'll, but I can read, I could also just read. So th I'll give you a few questions from the faculty questionnaire. Um, it's, it's a scale of one to five agree or disagree to agree. So some of the questions include, I feel satisfied with the way my students engage with the subject matter I'm teaching. I'm able to speak to students in a calm, respectful tone, even when problems arise. I'm able to redirect off task behavior with minimal disruption to my lessons and so forth. So uh, support staff questions are include things like, I feel valued for my contributions and ideas. I'm included in school-wide activities. And then the parent family questionnaire includes questions like, I feel welcome at my child's school. I have a sense of what's happening in my child's classrooms. My te child's teacher helps me understand some ways I can support my child's learning. So that's just a sampling. Uh, is that helpful? Yeah, and then Sue, how many questions um, roughly are each one? Yeah, I can tell you for each one. So, um, so the school climate survey overall has, they're not numbered, so let me just ask. It looks like about 15 questions. Okay. The student questionnaire has 15. The faculty questionnaire has about 15. The support staff questionnaire has about eight. And then the parent family questionnaire has only seven. And are they designed to be done like pre and post or is that kind of up to the, the up district to the community? To decide. Um, I think I, I would probably do pre and post data. Okay. I would do the beginning of the year and end of the year. And, okay. and the, there's recommendations, suggestions within the materials for how to use these and when to administer them. And then um, just a question that's come up before. Um, you have the first 10 weeks of the lessons and you had indicated that they should be done in order because they scaffold. Correct. Um, and then have you found like a, a dosage at which people report uh, better outcomes, like teachers report better outcomes if they complete a certain number of the lessons or the activities or? So um, certainly, certainly the more frequently that you use the lessons, the program's really designed to be used daily. Okay. So, you know, you have enough, you have, an, you have 30 weeks of instruction, basically, okay. with, for, for, for developing additional lessons. Um, and, and certainly, you know, the more frequently you, we really recommend you use the program as designed. So I will tell you, um, when I went to check in with the district in New Hampshire a few weeks ago, the teachers who had been teaching the program with intention and really teaching the lessons every day consistently, or yeah, doing the circles every day consistently and using the lessons every week were reporting unbelievable success stories. The teachers who taught the first 10 and then sort of kind of dropped off, they weren't doing as well. The students were not doing as well. Okay, that's anyway, good to know. I'll share that with you, yeah. Other questions? I think, I think Sue did a really great job giving you guys a, an overview of what's included in the program and the costs and you know just certain things to think about, but is there anything else that you would like to know? So we will get the PowerPoint. Um, we post that with the recording. Um, and please be patient with us. We need to send it to a vendor in order to be closed captioned and then it will be put up on the website. Um, you will find it in two places. You'll find it on the alignment website next to the information about the program. And then um, on the bottom of the building expertise page is the link. And I also shared it with you here in the webinar earlier to the YouTube playlist where all the different webinars we've done this year on um, SEL will be in one location. Um, I will send something out when this webinar is ready to let you all know. Um, so if we have no more questions, I'm just gonna kind of give it a, a minute or so here, if that's okay with the two of you and see what we get. Um, how does this pair with safe and civil schools? You know, I'm not familiar with safe and civil schools, so I, I apologize. I yeah. can't research. I'm not either, so I'm not sure I can even answer. Okay. Other questions? 
Leah, is Safe and Civil Schools a character ed program? Oh, no. Okay. Um, I'm not sure we have an answer to that question. But I think if, if you were to send some information to Sue or Leslie about Safe and Civil Schools, they could probably give you a little bit more information about uh, the connections and alignment. Would that be true, Sue? Uh, for sure. I'm going to Google it real quick and see if I can find it. Okay. Um, you know, I think the biggest difference, I think, between Caring School Community and, and most other SEL uh, support programs that I'm accustomed to is CSC is really designed to be used by classroom teachers every day. Okay, so it looks like Safe and Civil Schools is uh, a training for PBIS. Uh. Correct? I, so it does have yeah. materials, yeah. I kind of. <laughs> she says it's kind of. Okay. Yeah. yeah I think it's specifically around uh, behavior management. Mm -hmm. behavior management. Okay. Yeah, and just kind of because we've had a number of questions about PBIS on this, just one thing to, to sort of sort this out a little bit. And we do have a, a webinar in that playlist on SEL and PBIS. Keep in mind that PBIS is compliance, trying to manage behaviors and compliance related. Social emotional learning are the skills kids need to do that. And it's not about the compliance. So that's sort of where there's the difference in the alignment. Not knowing much about what Safe and Civil Schools is, if it's connected to PBIS, um, the, the social emotional learning pieces in this curriculum or any is this teaching kids how to do those subset skills that they need to be successful in your matrix. Um, so uh, I encourage you to check that out. Uh, we've been working with the PBIS network in Wisconsin, so they're very familiar with the SEL work that we are doing, and they can answer questions for you as well around the alignment um, because they do fit together very well. Other questions for Sue about the program? And I will just add um, to that, Beth, in terms of the core competencies for social emotional learning. In the principal's leadership guide, there is some information about how the program really aligns with those competencies. Yep. And it is based in a, a castle, the CASEL framework. Correct. Yep. Okay, yep, it came in that it is a behavior management, classroom management program. Mm -hmm. So SEL, explicit instruction of SEL and SEL comprehensive programming is gonna support any behavior management program that, that you choose to do. So in that respect, I would say they do go together. What I would really want to look at is um, the organization for intervention for mm -hmm. struggle uh, and how that those two things go together. Yeah. We'll see and, and that. So it may be if, if the Safe and Civil Schools has a plan that's working really well and that is the school-wide discipline plan that you use, then you know you might consider replacing the caring school community discipline with what you have in Safe and Civil Schools. That's a that's a good point to make. Um, so everybody heard that that if you find that you're already doing a behavior management or classroom management system that's working and it aligns with the work that you're doing with SEL, you may not need to do the component in the program. It'd be, it would be the conversation. I, I, I think what I would recommend is when the school leadership team gets together to decide what you're going to do and really start to put together your school-wide discipline plan or to, uh, to evaluate your current school-wide discipline plan, that you would look at both approaches and then decide what's going to be best for your students and what really matches what you're trying to do and what your goals are. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we're going to wrap up here. Um, you have contact information for Sue. And Leslie, I will put my email here in case you don't have it, although I imagine you folks get things from me very frequently. Um, if you would like to, and this came up earlier, to talk to somebody who is using the program, um, as Leslie indicated in the chat box, they're just beginning to work with schools in Wisconsin, but they do have some national partners. Um, they do have contacts of people that will be willing to talk with you about the program and tell you their experiences. So just reach out to us to let us know and we will connect you. Um, and be patient, but we will get this recording online for you as soon as possible. And with that, I think we will um, end here. 
And I thank you again for joining us for this webinar today on Friday and have a great weekend, everybody. Um, enjoyed seeing you all again. Thank Bye. You.